article that I picked, as many of you also did, was the Brian Greene article. Um, and he has quite a few theses sort of, or points that he makes in his paper, but the one I chose to focus on was where he talked about how art is a, art is a communicator for human truth, um, and also how art kind of has ambiguity and doesn't stick to patterns or meaning. Um, very often it's usually in the eyes of the interpreter. Um, and I sort of picked a quote that exemplifies that. He says, art is a critical component of this project, a pathway towards uh, a yet broader variety of truths that encompass subjective experience and celebrates our distinctive human response to the world. And the artist I did, as Mr. Greco said, is Namjoon Pike. Um, he was part of two movements uh, called Fluxus and Postmodernism. And Fluxus is essentially neo-Dadaism. So the weirdness and sort of avant-garde Dadaism, but in later, later from an original Dadaism that was. And postmodernism is interesting because it's kind of um, almost a societal critique on things like politics and technology and stuff. So, and that's very important for Nanjing Pike's artwork. So the first artwork I picked was um, Electronic Superhighway. It's this humongous uh, light sculpture, essentially, with lots of LED tubes um, and CRT TVs, each playing their own video that encompasses uh, the culture in the state that they're contained within. Um, and interestingly, it's actually, some of these things are very specific to Namjoon Pike. Uh, so when he visited, I believe it was Louisiana, he put a Louisiana artist, like as a musician there, instead of something like New Orleans. Um, and the main parts of this artwork are that it's obviously very bright, very noisy, very flashy, and it commands the presence in the room with how big it is. Um, and this visual overload sort of has two points that, that Pike came up with. One is that you can access through you know, your TV and through media the whole world. You don't have to leave your house. Um, but he also says this is kind of a bad thing. It discourages you from going out and exploring. Um, and also the images that you see are very catered by the media. The, the next art I chose is this humongous TV uh, sculpture called The More the Better. Um, it sits in a modern art museum in, uh, in Seoul, in South Korea. Um, and it is huge, it is loud, and it is bright, just like Electronic Superhighway. Um, however, because you can't see all of it at one time, and it has these 360 TVs, in the sense where Electronic Superhighway sort of said, oh, this is discouraging exploration, this encourages exploration, you move around up the spiral lamp to see all of the, uh, what's being displayed on the TVs. And what is being displayed on the TVs are, according to Pike, lots of Korean artists and musicians, and it was a display of Korean culture because it was built for the 1988 um, Seoul Olympic Games. Um, however, just like how there was a caveat in Electronic Superhighway, Pike says, this also is a reflection on the hyper-consumption of media in South Korea, how the country was slowly moving towards being obsessed with being trendy and being new. And finally, in very stark contrast, the third um, art I picked was TV Buddha. And, you know, unlike the other two artworks, it is a very serene setting, very calm, a lack of color, pretty much everything is white. The TV is white, the camera is white, the background is white, all of it, um, except for the Buddha, which is, I think, made of bronze, but it looks more black. Um, and it's a symbol for reflection and serenity. The Buddha is observing itself in the TV. But it's also a critique on how through this camera and through the TV, we can become obsessed with seeing ourselves and also be very, um, it's, it's hard to bring a sense of self-confidence because we see all these other people looking so pretty on the TV and that we internalize, oh, I don't look good, I don't look like them. So he was, uh, Namjoon Pike kind of, he was almost credited with seeing the future because all of his sort of cautious optimism about how media and technology is both innovative and interesting, but also something that will deeply affect us, ended up being pretty true. And it's, like Green said, one of those human truths that we've all come to understand that the media and technology has both a positive and a negative effect um, on our lives. And in that ambiguity of both good and bad is where Namjoon's part of uh, Namjoon Pike fell in. Thank you.
think so. Exactly five minutes to the second. Ooh. Any questions? All right, audience, questions, comments, compliments. Yeah, I, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to compliment you on the way that it's presented. Like you're very articulate, with also like the style of like the slides. I thought that was very like creative of you. Oh thanks. I like yesterday I scoured the internet looking for like retro TV or CRT TV, and in fact the first slide I spent like 20 minutes trying to Photoshop that because I I couldn't get a good angle on the text. But yeah, I I, I thank you uh, for the comment on the visuals. I do like my aesthetically pleasing stuff. Yeah, it's visual unified very, very nicely. So um, it, it gives us variation. You, know, you can play with a, a TV screen as a way of framing various images. Very nice. Okay. Um, you all have all seen some work of Nam, Nam June Pikes before this piece. So is there anything new that you learned about Nam June Pike that you didn't already know from the documentary clips we watched? Oh, you asked for me? Or anybody. I, I, I mean, I think I learned, like, there's, like, both, like, there's, like, good things that he's talking about the world, and, like, kind of, like, the bad things that he's talking about the world. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and I think one of the interesting things with Pike as well is how he was originally, like, a classically trained musician. Um, and that obviously is very yesterday as opposed to the sort of modernness of TV. And so I think that's also part of his ambiguity in both good and bad. Technology is a very, very important part of his work. And um, we saw, I think in this class, we saw the clip of the John Cage yeah. uh, doing Tudor performance. You know, was they're classically trained musicians like Don June Pike, but they're doing something that's totally new, that was so shocking and uh, disruptive to the world of music. So we see that happening with video art. Yeah, and when I was looking at Fluxus as well, John Cage was one of the one of the people who was credited as sort of the beginning of Fluxus. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I like how you explained that as almost like a neo Dadaist movement. That was a, a, a good comparison. Thanks, Stella. All right, thank you.